He's the <laughs> co-founder and CEO of a company called Full 3D. And in 2019, he was named Forbes 30 under 30. Uh, Wolf 3D is creating personal 3D avatars of people for games and AR, VR using a selfie. And their goal is to provide this persistent identity for virtual worlds. So Timo, please come to the, uh, to the stage and share your experience. I'm here, Kasper. Thank you. Can everyone hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. Excellent. Very All right, so thank you for the introduction. Gladly, Casper is my co-founder, so he knows exactly what I'm going to talk about. Um, yeah, so we're Wolf, Wolf 3D. We create avatars of people, as Casper mentioned. Um, we see that currently online communication happens mostly through uh, video calls like Zoom, as we all know, sitting at our homes right now. Um, or this is like a you know special case. Uh, or just traditional social media messaging. Um, we believe that that's about a change. We believe that the future of online communication is in virtual worlds. Um, you know, when I grew up in Estonia, um, I used to play basketball, and uh, basketball court was kind of a place where I would hang out with my friends and, and spend time together. Um, you know, you play the game, but mostly you're just kind of hanging around and, and socializing. Um, when I look at my nephew, who is like 14 uh, today, then um, you know, he spends most of his time in Roblox, in Fortnite. Um, that is the way that kids hang out and socialize these days. So the kind of the physical hangout space that we had uh, is moving into the virtual world. Um, and the numbers speak for, speak for themselves. Uh, when you look at the usage of Roblox uh, in the US, which is kind of a social virtual world, um, then you know kids spend more time in Roblox than they spend in, in traditional social media. Actually, even more time than in YouTube, Netflix, and Facebook combined. So that shows us how much uh, you know the shift is already happening, and how much the new generation is basically a virtual world native, and they're used to uh, you know communicating with each other in games more than um, in in traditional social media. And you know the question we ask as this shift is happening is um, how are our, our how are we going to represent our identities in this new social virtual world? And of course, it's through avatars. Um, now that brings two different kind of problems that need to be solved. First, um, you know the current avatars we have in the virtual world are generic. As you see, your all major avatars to come here. Uh, you know, it is a version of yourself, perhaps. You could customize the hair and clothing. Um, you know, in games, you can perhaps buy assets for the avatar, which people are doing a lot of. Um, you know, in Fortnite, people spend $2.4 billion a year in one year, uh, just a year, yeah, just to buy, uh, buy virtual assets for their avatar. So that is already a huge market. And that number kind of shows us how much people value their virtual identities. Um, and we think it's obvious that when games become more like social platforms, we, we're, gonna, we're going to need to have our real life identities in, in the virtual world as well. So that's the first problem, you know, bringing our real uh, identities into, the, into games, into virtual worlds. And that is a problem that no one's been able to solve so far. Um, and, and, and yeah, and I'll come to the second problem uh, and after that. Um, yeah, so I'll kind of give you an overview of the last five years of how we um, you know, have solved the first problem in different iterations of the product and uh, what we plan to do about the second point, which is yeah, transferring your avatar between different kinds of games and virtual experiences. All right, so we started off actually um, yeah, more than five years ago by building a, a scanning studio. So we had this uh, full body 3D scanner, uh, 50 or 65 cameras actually, and we would make a full body scan of a person. And we did it as a service for games and so forth. Now, as we were doing this, um, a company called Oculus uh, was bought by Facebook. So we realized that, okay, um, Facebook is you know, putting a lot of money in that, so VR is really happening. And obviously Facebook is a social company. So uh, VR is going to be social. Um, and you know, when you think about it, then every VR social experience, like what's the core key element of that is an avatar. That's what you kind of speak with, right? Um, 
So, so we decided that we are going to build a solution to make um, kind of consumer avatars uh, of anyone in the world for VR. Um, uh, yeah, just easy, easy to use kind of solution. So, uh, going from the studio, the next step we, we made uh, was to build this giant egg. <laughs> so it was basically a 3D scanner. Um, we used this like a 3D scanning photo booth, if you will. Um, we had them in airports, we had them in like events, um, you know, museums and places like that. Um, you go in, you push a button and you get a 3D scan of the face. Um, we uh, scanned like more than 10,000 people with them around the world. And that's basically just to collect data and just to kind of uh, make the studio scanning a lot easier than it was uh, before. Um, yeah, so this was this, 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 this was the uh, kind of first product to uh, towards the consumer. Um, after doing that for a while and scanning more than 10,000 people, we built uh, the next product, which was a, a scanning app. So we were convinced that the best way to represent a person um, in the virtual world is, is as a realistic avatar. Like you all want to be exactly what we are uh, in the real world, in the virtual world as well. So that was what we did with the hardware. That's what we did with the scanning app. So we had like 15 photos of a person. We generated an, uh, generate a scan of that and then trying to make a very accurate replication. So that's an avatar uh, of me, for example. Um, yeah, so what we learned doing that is Wow, people don't want to be exactly like themselves. <laughs> you know, you want to be a better version of yourself. You want to be more beautiful, younger, you know, taller, whatever. So that's um, looking back, not not very surprising. But but we learned yes that um, people don't want to be themselves. They want to be a version of themselves. You want something that you can recognize uh, as yourself, but uh, only the good parts. So I, I think it's it's kind of similar to how we create our social media profiles. Um, you know, you don't create the one-on-one -on -one version of your life, you create a curated version. And, and we see that people want to do it with avatars as well. So after, you know, several years of, of different products, we came to uh, the product we have right now, um, which is, you know, the goal is to create avatars in different styles, um, to create avatars that you can actually love and, and recognize at the same time. Uh, that you want to be kind of proudly represent uh, you want to probably represent yourself as this avatar in virtual worlds. Um, yeah, so we launched this product about a year ago. Um, it works, works using just a single selfie. So we take one photo, we convert it into all kinds of different styles of avatars. Mm. Excuse me. So we can work with any kind of games, like even, you know, sandbox kind of games where, with, with voxel avatars to, you know, actually realistic as well. Um, so just five seconds to generate the avatar on any device. Um, you know, uh, it works on all, all game engines, all platforms. Super easy to use. Um, here's some more pictures of the avatars. You know, since launching the product, we have now signed deals with uh, several of the top five gaming companies in, in the world. Um, uh, from VR, we're working with HTC, for example, on their new VR enterprise platform. So basically kind of proving that, um, you know, the technology works and also that companies are willing to integrate that and pay for it. Um, and we basically provided it so far as an SDK that the company needs to go um, Just a little bit about how we do it. Basically, the answer is a giant fucking database. <laughs> so we have scanned actually 25,000 people in total, uh, 10,000 with the, with the hardware and 15,000 with phones. Uh, and that is the core of how we create avatars. So basically, we have a deep learning solution um, that, yeah, the training data is the scan and, and images of people. Um, so first, we create like a regular realistic avatar, and then we have a stylization system, which is kind of, you can think of them like, like Instagram filters that you apply on the realistic avatar, and then we get any style we want. Now, that all is cool. Uh, and that is uh, just the first part of the problem that I mentioned in the beginning, which is creating realistic, not realistic, sorry, creating personal avatars for virtual worlds. What? That's what we've been focusing on, on the last, for the last five years uh, and, and many different iterations. Uh, we believe now we have something that is um, that is good. You know, uh, it's really scalable. It's really easy to use, and we're proven that the gaming industry and the VR industry needs it and, and is willing to kind of pay for it. That's 
your virtual avatar between different games and different different uh, virtual experiences. So um, to achieve that, uh, we're building our next product, which is an avatar platform. Um, you know why? Why we think it's important? You know we don't think it makes sense for you to create a new avatar every time you go into a new virtual world. Like you go come to this event, you had to create an avatar uh, from scratch. Now maybe next week you go to another event that has another platform, and you have to create the new avatar again. So and then you play a game with your friend or three different games, and you know you get the point. So is your like social identity so it needs to be consistent um, and you need to be able to bring it from one game to another um, to just make it a smooth and like a logical uh, experience so for the user our goal is to create a standard identity you can bring from one game to another um, so yeah persistent identities that is the goal right um, how I achieve that is uh, by basically building an outer platform so we provide games and VR companies a full avatar system that includes a personal avatar uh, that, and, and also the entire body, uh, customization assets and everything that comes with it. So basically, we don't charge for the avatar system itself. We just give it out to you to two games. Um, so if you're interested in that, just you know, find me later or write us a, a, an email, or whatever. Uh, basically, we give you a full avatar system. You don't have to spend any time on, on building it yourself. Uh, and we have revenue share from the assets that are sold around the avatar. So basically, we create the assets. Uh, in the future, we also uh, work with the content creator community, which is users themselves that create the, those, uh, you know, shirts and, and assets around the avatar. It's also brands uh, like, you know, uh, big fashion brands uh, and all kinds of licensed content. Um, you know, there's some, some like music bands that are interested in, in, be, in be, being a part of the platform and so forth. So basically from one side, making the avatar supported in as many games as possible, and from the other side, working with the best content creators on the planet to get everyone the, the avatars they, they, they want. Um, iterations of, of the platform looks like that. It's actually a, a web-based avatar creator. So basically you can integrate it into any, any game engine or any, any kind of app, VR, mobile, doesn't matter. Um, we push a button, we launch the web-based avatar creator. Uh, the user creates an avatar there um, and you know pushes a button and they're back in the game and continue playing without having to leave um, the app itself. So that's what we're building right now. We are actually coming out with the first integration on the 1st of May, so that's very soon. <laughs> and, and we have about 10 companies now signed uh, with the platform, platform already. Um, but yeah, it's still very fresh. As I mentioned before, it's like free to join. We don't charge for the system itself, but we have revenue share from the assets sold. Um, and that's going to be like that forever. Um, yeah, and our long term goal is to create an identity that users can bring with them um, into any game they go. Uh, one side, as, as I mentioned, creating the best content possible by working with the content library, like uh, community, and for the other side, making the avatars uh, usable in, in as many experiences as possible. And meanwhile, providing uh, uh, you know games with the best personal avatar technology and everything around that that you need for creating the perfect experiences. Um, we believe that the future of virtual worlds is going to be fragmented. You're going to have a lot of smaller kind of experiences where you go, depending on what you want to do, uh, small games you play, you know, events, uh, and so forth. And that's why kind of a cross-platform identity um, you know, provider needs to exist. And it needs to be kind of a third-party company, not one of the big players like Epic Games themselves. Um, so that's what we're uh, attempting to achieve here. And last but not least, a shout out for the team. Some of you are here as well. So everything is, is made possible by uh, by the team and everyone's grinding hard and it's it's, it's just great. Um, we have, we're about 20 people. <laughs> yeah, sorry, in the middle. <laughs> we're about 20 people, um, mostly based in Estonia. Artists, uh, data scientists, and, 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 and business people and, and, and everything. Yeah. So that's cool. Um, we're both 3D. Our goal is to create the next generation of online identities, avatars uh, for virtual worlds. And happy to answer any any questions you might have.
Does anyone have any questions? Thank you, Sebastian. All right. <clears throat> questions? Do we, do we have any questions? Yes, I have a question. All right. Yeah, so um, congratulations on your avatar. And this is, do you, Thank you. Do you have a, like an, a live example of how this could work? Yeah. So if, if you just drop us an email, we can send you an app where you can, you can try it out and um, we can send you the new kind of platform link as well very soon. So you can create yourself an avatar. Great. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Seems like there's another hand up. Uh -huh. Geoffrey? Yep. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, just a quick question. I can see on your website that you have a partnership with Stanford and with the VA. Yep. Uh, so what's the partnership? Yeah, well, we basically created avatars for one of the research projects. I see Casper knows more about that than I do. But, uh, but yeah, it's uh, we created avatars for, I think, several different research projects that they did uh, around the avatars. Great, thanks. Yeah. And obviously what they're doing is, is very interesting for us. You know, they're, they're kind of researching exactly the, the, the most interesting parts of um, you know, virtual worlds and, and VR, kind of the social parts, which is, um, I think, amazing work they're doing. Yeah, thanks a lot for your answer. And I agree, as I work in the same field, I did my postdoc, in, uh, you know, in Barcelona with okay. Mercedes. Mercedes, you know, is the, the other lab working on embodiment and, and VR, so that's why I'm right. asking the question. Oh, yeah, we should connect them. Yeah, yeah sure. Yes. Yeah, cool. All right. Thank you, Timo. All right. Are there... Okay, I think we have Another one last... We have time for one last question. There's Stand one up. hand up. Yeah. Is it Daniel? I think we can't hear you. Or was it? Oh. Whoever had the hand up there, yeah. Now I could hear you. Yeah. Okay. Well, All awesome. Right, so Thank you, everyone, for your time. And yeah, you can find us at both3d.io. The website is really fucking old, outdated, but um, you know you get the main point, and you can contact from, uh, us from there. And Timo at wolf3d.io if you want to write me. So, thank you, everyone. All right, thank you, Timo. Uh, so, as the next speaker, we have Don Stein. He is a managing director of a 